Shalom, brothers and sisters. All honor and great glory goes to our Heavenly Father, Yahuwah, in the name of Yahusha HaMashiach. And this is part three of this series, the Messiah in the Old Testament, where we're going to be covering many scriptures from different books. So y'all bear with me and also take notes. Write this down for your own records so that you'll be able to present this to others. But at the meat of this particular ser video series is the fact that where it says, my servant David shall rule over them, it is talking about him and his sons together down the lineage to the final one that was to come who was prophesied to come out of his loins to be a king and a high priest and to reign or rule over Yahshua through his lineage now many like to throw out these special verses to stick with what they want to believe in and that's fine let them let them fulfill what they need to fulfill. But for those who got ears to hear, this is more ammo and ammunition for you to use to solidify your faith and the faith of others who are meant to be the elect in these final hours, brothers and sisters. So I'm going to download this particular document on my website. You can download it download it and add to it if you want to but this is the, a foundation for you to not be deceived by those who are out there deceiving the wolves and sheep clothing that's on here preaching and teaching things they ought not to be most of them wasn't called brothers and sisters so I'm not going to recap on this here most of you got a good understanding on this particular part here which explains everywhere where it says David my servant shall reign over them if it just says that you know that it's talking about all these other scriptures as well don't let no one one line you and take you from the word of the most high brothers and sisters so download this document and you can even write in um, the understanding of where it says my servant David you also gotta look at where it says my servant Jacob or my servant Israel anywhere in the scripture by itself and know that it's talking about all of the children of Yahshua not just the one Jacob when it says Jacob or Israel by itself or Yahshua by itself you know it's talking about all the children not just the one person it's the same with my servant David because the most high doesn't change men change so everywhere it says just my servant David you have to tie in all these scriptures here little there little into that statement where it says my servant David for those who have ears to hear and understand and this is the missing link to the understanding when you read those things like in Ezekiel. My servant David shall rule over them. It's that little simple lack of understanding which is destroying souls and hearts and minds of men and women on here. Brothers and sisters, and now I want to take a look at something here that I made. For those who are having problems when they come to the New Testament and they're reading J.C. and they're thinking that J.C. is is the one that it was talking about in the scriptures. It's not. It's their fantasy version of Yahusha. And those who are following this character they do all these things here. They believe in these things here. Now, I'm not done with the list. I'm still working on it. 
and y'all could send me um, things I can add to this list. Now, if you send me something concerning this side, send me the counterpart that I can put on this side as well with it. Because y'all could say I'm doing a comparison here. Comparison of Satan and Jesus and Yahweh and Yahusha and the sons of darkness, sons and daughters of darkness, sons and daughters of light. The Christians and the Jewish, Israelis, Yashualites and Gentiles, the believing Gentiles on this side. So, y'all can see what I'm doing here. And there is some that is trying to tie some of this stuff over here with Hamashiach. And this stuff here isn't written in the scriptures, y'all. Now, I got more to add to this now, but y'all send me what you can. Sunday worship belongs to this group. And we know some of the Jewish Israelis, they they do the um, their Sabbath day. It's not the same as our Sabbath day, y'all. They, they go by the moon calendar, so I'm about to add that on there as well. The moon calendar. And the Enoch calendar over here. But they got their Caucasian JC who dresses as a Roman and caters to the Romans. We have our black Yahusha who caters to the Most High and His will and to His people. Who is His people? Yasharal and the believing Gentiles, whether they are. Uh, free our bond. And of course, y'all can go over this by person pause, but I just wanted to show y'all this here for some who may not see the difference between their JC and our Yahusha. There's a huge difference between both of them. And the Most High and their G.O.D. I forgot to put that up here. Their G.O.D. Is not the same as Yahweh. It's a different deity. That they added to the books. In place of the Father's name. Just like this one here was added to the books. In place of Yahusha's name. And they follow a religious order. That's different from. What's written in the scriptures. So this here has many things outside of scriptures that's brought into it. And you tell that those lies long enough, people will believe them in their hearts and minds. And that's why we need to practice reading and believing the truth on this side every day. So that that can be ingrained on inside of us. Brothers and sisters. So this is just a. Another document that I'm working on, taking my time with. And when it's ready, I'll put it up on the website. So now let's get to the video. Okay, we're already in the video. Let's get to scripts. Let me see. Let me go up here. Okay, we're going to start in Exodus chapter 23. 20 through 23. And this is just a foreshadow of what was to happen when Hamashiach come on the earth. The things that we read, the things he was supposed to accomplish and do. This is foreshadow of that. Um, just as the Most High sent his angel before Zion, and we were to listen to this angel, the same is true for when his son returned. Let's read. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him. Y'all see that? That's a warning from the Most High. Beware of him and obey his voice. That's, there is obedience. You are to listen to this angel that goes before you. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions. For my name is in him. 
So the son was to come in the name of the father. And the name was in him as well as it is in us as well. And we are to obey what the father told us to obey. So this angel that was there bearing his name, though we are speaking to the father, speaking through this particular angel to the father, he, the angel was still there on behalf of the father and so there was one prophesied to come on behalf of the father to do the same thing but many is tripping and stumbling over him. this one that prophesied to come but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that i speak then i will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries there is another key right there. Obey the voice of the Heavenly Father, the Holy Spirit. Obey the voice of the Son of the Most High. And He will be with you against your adversaries, your enemies right now. For mine angels shall go before thee and bring thee into, unto the Amorites and the Hittites and Perizzites and Canaanites and Hivites and Jebusites, and I will cut them off. So these are just, that, that's a foreshadow of Hamashiach happening. And there are many foreshadows that done happen, brothers and sisters. Many foreshadowings throughout all the book. Now let's go here to um, Wisdom of Solomon. chapter 18 and we're going to start right here 13 for while they were disbelieving all things by reason of the enchantments upon the destruction of the firstborn this is talking about when the firstborn children was destroyed they confessed the people to be Yah's son the son Yashara Yah's son for while peaceful silence enwrapped all things at night in her own swiftness from, out, from heaven out of the royal throne and stern warrior. Wait a minute. Sorry about that. I messed up on that one. For while peaceful silence enwrapped all things at night in her own swiftness was in mid course, thine all powerful word leaped from heaven out of the royal throne now see that thine all-powerful word the word y'all remember the word was made flesh the word leaped from heaven out of thy royal throne a stern warrior into the midst of the doomed land bearing as a sharp sword thine unfeigned commandments and standing it filled all things with death and while it touched the heaven it trod upon the earth then forthwith a apparition then forthwith apparitions and dreams terrible troubled them and fears came upon them unlooked for and each one thrown here half dead another there made manifest wherefore he was dying for the dreams perturbing them did for show this that they might not perish without knowing why they were afflicted hallelujah and the main part right here is this one right here thine all-powerful word leapt from heaven out of the royal throne he was always there hidden by the most high but he's there. He was. He's in plain sight, but hidden. Brothers and sisters. Now, even though this one, the Word made flesh, is a king, does that mean that the Most High isn't a king as well? The Most High has made many other kings. Besides the kings of Yashara, he, he, he sets kings over the other nations. 
But when it comes to Hamashiach being a king, all of a sudden there's a problem. He's one of the sons of David. The promises was given to David that his sons would reign and rule and be kings over all of Yahshabar. But when this one came, all of a sudden there's a, there's a problem. All of a sudden he's a stumbling block. That doesn't change the fact that the Most High is the great king, brothers and sisters. As the scriptures call him and say, for Yahweh, Most High, is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. And Hamashiach is a king. I am a king. You are kings and queens. By the word of the Most High. Not because I say so. Or I. Because I chose that. Because of the Most High chose it. It's His word. It's His will. It's His way. So they are using all these things to entrap you. Trap your mind and deceive you. Brothers and sisters. The Most High will always be the great king over all. And he's making a nation of kings and priests. As he said. And where? Let's go to. Revelation chapter 1. Revelations 5 and 9. And they sung a new song saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to Yah by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. And has made us unto our Yah kings and priests. So where's the river? The revolt. Where is the injustice against these statements here? He have made us kings and priests. And he even said we are Alahayams in, in the book of Psalms as well. Where is the revolt on that one? You know, they rebuked Hamashiach for saying such a thing. And they're going to rebuke you as well. Just as they're doing right here on YouTube and out there on the streets. So we got all this evidence that the Most High can make kings and priests. But for this one person, you, you tripping out, you freaking out. Because some man done stood up and told you this, that, and the other. Let's go to the book of Daniel, y'all. Book of Daniel 7 and let me see uh, 13. Yeah, I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, and they brought him near before him, and there was given him dominion and glory in the kingdom that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion and everlasting is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away in his kingdom, that which shall be shall not be destroyed. So the Most High gave this individual, whom we're talking about, dominion, glory, a kingdom, that all people, nations, and languages should serve him. It's not that hard. But people make it hard through lies and deception. Let's go into some more understanding in Second Samuel chapter 22 and 50, 50. Now remember, this is ammo and that you can use to add to your notes and your records that you can show. Uh, your brothers and sisters who don't know this information or don't understand it. And you can show them these scriptures and give them the understanding that the Most High has called David and his seed to be kings over Yahshua. Brothers and sisters. Now, it says here, Therefore I will give thanks unto thee, O Yahuwah, 
among the heathen, and I will sing praises unto thy name. He is the tower of salvation for his king. The Most High is the tower of salvation for his king, and show mercy to his anointed unto David, and to his seed forevermore. The Most High is our salvation, brothers and sisters. And through his servant David, one would come to be that salvation. The Most High has used Moses as a hand of his salvation, as his arm of salvation. When he brought us out of misery, him. He has used Esther as his arm of salvation when she boldly went into the camp and cut off the, the general's neck. I mean, cut off the general's head. Cutting off the strength of that camp. And she brought the head back with her to the city. The Most High has used many to save Zion. But when this one comes, all of a sudden there's a problem. There's, there's all this lies and deception and fighting and back and forth. And, and whew, there's going to be so many that's not going to make it, brothers and sisters. Because of lack of knowledge and understanding. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge and understanding. Now right here it says. The Elohim of Yasharal said. The rock of Yasharal spake to me. He that ruleth over men must be just. Ruling in the fear of Yah. The rock of Yasharal is the most high and his son comes in the name of the most high bearing all that the most high is brothers and sisters the same as that angel came and went before zion bearing the will of the father in him is the same as this one that is to come would do. And many others was a foreshadow of this final one to come. Like Moses and Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. All foreshadows of this holy one to come. Brothers and sisters. Brothers and sisters, they really hate this particular verse. A couple of verses as well. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, 15 through 17. Let's read it. In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David. Wait a minute, y'all. Well, let's take a look real quick. Jeremiah 23 says that this one would come in the name of the Father, Yahweh, our righteousness, right? And this is his name, whereby he shall be called, Yahweh, our righteousness, bearing the name of the Most High. Let's go back. In those days, in at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land, just as prophesied that someone's coming back to not only reign and rule, but to bring ex to execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name whereby this is a typo. He shall be called Yahweh, our righteousness. Again, the branch of righteousness, Yahweh, righteousness. He, he bears the name of the Most High. For thus 
saith Yahweh, David shall never want a man to sit upon the throne of it, of the house of Yasharal. Just as he promised in Chronicles that David and his sons would always be king over Yasharal. Neither shall the priest, the Levites, want a man before me to offer burnt offerings and to kindle meat offerings and to do sacrifice continually, just as the Levites was chosen to do the office to be the priest of the Most High, to do the services of the Most High. King David was chosen of the house of Yehuda, that him and his sons would always be the kings. And the word of Yahweh came unto Jeremiah, saying, well, we, let's get into 19 through 22. And the word of Yahweh came unto Jeremiah, saying, Thus saith Yahuwah, if you can break my covenant of the day and my covenant of the night, and that there should not be day and night in their season, then may also my covenant be broken with David my servant, that he should not have a son to reign upon his throne. It's really simple. That he should not have a son to reign upon his throne. So we know that a son was to come. Let's not be tricked and fooled and deceived, brothers and sisters. And with the Levites, the priests, my ministers. So the Levites also promised to always have the priesthood. Though he's making a nation of kings and priests. Though we are accounted as kings and priests. That doesn't change the position in place of David and his sons and Levite and his sons. Though we also become kings and priests. Brothers and sisters. As the host of heaven cannot be numbered, neither the sand of the sea measured, so will I multiply the seed of David my servant and the Levites that minister unto me. Now this is a foreshadow of the final kingdom, brothers and sisters. A nation of kings and priests. When all of us who make it in the end shall uh, through Hamashiach be as um, the Father said we was going to be kings and priests why? because we reborn through him now he will always be king and the high priest but we are also kings and priests in him Brothers and sisters, you see, the Most High made man in his image that we would be like him and walk like him, talk like him, think like him, be as him, but not replace him or be equal to or greater than him, but be as him, do as he do. Be as he be. And Adam was given dominion. He was a king over all the earth. He was given dominion. And the kingdom. And all those promises. And of course he said that one had to come and restore that. And through him. That's what we become. We become the kings and priests of the earth. Because the Most High is holy. And this lines right up with um, what's written in Revelations 9 through 10. But let's go to Zechariah. Now, I want y'all to think about something while we're reading this. This, what we're about to read, is a foreshadow of Hamashiach. What he did for us when he took in our sins and he died and he took those sins to the grave and he was risen. I want y'all to keep that in mind. This is Zechariah chapter 3. And he showed me Yahshua, the high priest, standing before 
the angel of Yahweh and Satan standing at his right hand to resist him. And Yahweh said unto Satan, Yahweh rebuke thee, O Satan. Even Yahweh that hath chosen Jerusalem rebuke thee. Is not this a brand plucked out of the fire? Now Yahusha was clothed with filthy garments and stood before the angel. Now I want y'all to think about this. This is when Hamashiach took our sins. This is a foreshadow of this, of what's to come. He took our sins on into himself, onto himself. Y'all see it? And he answered and spake unto those that stood before him, saying, Take away the filthy garments from him. And unto him he said, Behold, I have caused thine inequity to pass from thee. And this is what's going to happen to us. Those who are in Hamashiach. That filthy garments, that filthiness is going to be left in the, in the grave be taken away from you all your sins and equity are going to pass from you it's going to pass the death angel is going to pass over you it's going to pass from you and i will clothe thee with change of raiment now threw that in there so you can think about exodus as well and the passover lamb and that story in exodus and i said let them set a fair mitre upon his head a crown so he was crowned, so will we be crowned. So they set a fair crown upon his head and clothed him with garments. And y'all know it says we will be given garments and revelations, clean garments to put on. And the angel of Yah stood by. And the angel of Yah protested unto Yahshua, saying, Thus saith Yah of hosts, if thou wilt walk in my ways, and if thou wilt keep my charge then thou shalt also judge my house and shalt also keep my courts and i will give thee places to walk among these that stand by and so just as hamashiach was given this we are given the same thing we read that right there in the book of daniels um right after it says hamashiach will be given the kingdom and dominion it but right below that it talks about his servants his uh, his his uh elect will have the the honor of judging as well right along with them hear now O Yahshua the high priest thou and thy fellows that sit before thee for they are men wondered at for behold I will bring forth my servant the branch for behold, the stone that I have laid before Yahshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. And we read this, and this matches what's in Revelation chapter 1. Uh, starting at 10 through 15 or 13. stone that I have laid before Yahshua upon one stone shall be seven eyes. This is the cornerstone it talks about, but this is in the scriptures. Behold, I will engrave the engraving thereof, saith Yahweh of hosts, and I will remove the inequity that land of that land in one day. In that day, saith Yahweh of hosts, shall you call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree, and the angel that talk with me came again and walked and waked me as a man that is waked out of sleep out of his sleep and said unto me what seest thou and i said i have looked and behold a candlestick all of gold with a bowl upon the top of it and his seven lamps thereupon thereon and seven pipes to the seven lamps which are upon the top thereof and two olive trees by it one upon the right side of the bowl and the other upon the left side of thereof. So y'all know this is in Revelations chapter 1. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my master? Then the angel that talked with me answered and said unto me, Knowest thou not what these be? 
And I said, No, my master. Then he answered and spake unto me, saying, This is the word of Yahweh unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, said Yahweh host. Who art thou, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, thou shalt become a plain, and he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying, Grace, grace unto thee. Let's talk about Hamashiach, Zerubbabel. Look up the meaning of that. It's really Zerubbah-Yah. This L part, y'all need to look up what, who that deity is. But anyway, And he shall bring forth the headstone thereof with shouting, crying, Grace, grace unto thee. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house, the cornerstone, Hamashiach. His hands shall also finish it. When he return, he's going to finish it. Finish Zion. And thou shalt know that Yahweh of hosts have sent me unto you. For who have despised the day of small things? For they shall rejoice and shall see the plummet in the hand of Zerubbabel with, these, with those seven. They are the eyes of Yahweh who which run to and fro through the whole earth. Then I answered him, Oh, then answered I, and said unto him, What are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick, and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again, and said unto him, What, what be these two olive branches, which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me, and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my master. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by Yahweh of the whole earth. The two anointed ones that stand by Yahweh of the whole earth. And we know one of them is Yahusha sits on the right hand side of him, brothers and sisters. And this is talking about him. Here a little, there a little. Line upon line, precept upon precept. Let's drop down to Zechariah 6 and 9. And read through 13. And the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying, Take of them of the captivity, even of Helda of Tobiah and of Jediah, Jedeah, which are come from Babylon, and come thou the same day, and go unto the house of uh, Joshua, Josiah, sorry, the son of Zephaniah. Then take silver and gold, and make crowns, and set them upon the head of Yahshua, the son of Yosedek, the high priest. And speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh Yahweh of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and shall build the temple of Yahweh. Even he shall build the temple of Yahweh, and he shall bear the glory, and shall sit and rule upon his throne, and he shall be a priest upon his throne. There it is, after the order of Melchizedek, he'll be a king and a priest on his throne. And the council of peace shall be between them both. Brothers and sisters, this is not talking about King David. And I know most of you know that, but there are those that need this extra extra word to put in their notes to reread and to study and to build and grow upon that their faith may not be shaken anymore let's drop down to 9 Zechariah 9 9 through 17 rejoice greatly O daughter of Zion shout O daughter of Jerusalem 
Behold, the king cometh unto thee. He is just, and have a salvation. And having salvation. Oh, the Most High is my salvation. He's the only one. No, the Most High put salvation in his hand. He came having salvation just as Moses came having salvation with him. Who is the Most High? They came with the Most High. And having salvation lowly and riding upon a donkey. And upon a coat, the fowl of a donkey. And I will cut off the chariot from Ephraim and the horse from Jerusalem. The battle bow shall be cut off, and he shall speak peace unto the heathen. And his domain shall be from sea even to sea, and from river even to the ends of the earth. As for thee also, by the blood of thy covenant, I have sent forth thy prisoners out of the pit wherein is no water. This is the job he gave Hamashiach, brothers and sisters, on his behalf as he sits on his throne. He has always sought someone on his behalf. Are you someone on the earth on his behalf to get his will done, whether it be good or evil? Turn you to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope. Even today do I declare that I will render double unto thee. When I have bent Judah for me, filled the bow of, with Ephraim, and raised up thy sons, O Zion, against thy sons, O Greece. Here it is again, Javan. These are the uh, part of the children of Chittim and the Greeks, the Romans right here. And made thee as the sword of a mighty man. And Yahweh shall be seen over them. And his arrow shall go forth as the lightning. And Yahweh Elohim shall blow the trumpet. And shall go with whirlwinds of the south. Now right here again. When it says the Most High shall blow the trumpet. We know that his angels is going to blow it. Blow these trumpets. But. Y'all got to see this. We all are the most highest workmanship. We are of him and from him. So what we do, we do. It is him doing through us and in us. For his name is on us. He has purchased us for a price. So though we know that the angels blowing it. Does this make this statement. False all of a sudden. No. And Yahweh. Elohim. Shall blow the trumpet. And shall go with whirlwinds of the south. Yahweh of hosts shall defend them. And they shall devour and subdue with sling stones, and they shall drink and make a noise as through wine, and they shall be filled like bowls and as the corners of the altar. And Yahweh there, Elohim, shall save them in the day as the flock of his people. So though Hamashiach bearing the name Yahweh, our righteousness comes. And does this work doesn't mean it's not the most high doing the work. It is the most high. It's his plan. He's doing everything. All right. And people are using this misunderstanding and lack of knowledge and wisdom to many's detriment. And many go in a lake of fire for not understanding these things. For they shall be as the stones of a crown lifted up as an ensign upon his land. We're going to be as the jewels. Y'all know those 12 jewels that the Most High has made up for his crown? We are his crown. His crown of joy. Crown of, of glory. Upon the earth. We are in place of him on the earth. We are as him on the earth. That's your position in place until he comes. Prepare the way for the Most High. 
for how great is his goodness. Now, you don't replace him per se as being in his glory and his greatness as a creator. Not like, no, you bearing all his works and goodness and, and uh, righteousness and holiness on the earth. That's what you're doing. Don't get it twisted now. For how great is his goodness and how great is his beauty. Corn shall make the young man cheerful and new wine the maids. Hallelujah. Let's go to Zechariah chapter 11, 12 through 13. 11, 12 through 13. Okay, it says, And I said unto them, If you think good, give me my price, and if not, forbear. So they weighed for my price thirty pieces of silver. You are brought for a price. And Yahweh said unto me, Cast it unto the potter, a goodly price that I was priced at of them. And I... I really didn't have to read this one, but, and I, yeah, I'll read it, took the 30 pieces of silver and cast them to the potter in the house of Yahweh. So, this is something else that was to be fulfilled by Hamashiach, written, brothers and sisters, to add to your notes. Let's go to 12, 7 through 10. Yahweh also shall save the tents of Judah first, that the glory of the house of David and the glory of the inhabitants of Jerusalem do not magnify themselves against Yehuda. In that day shall Yahweh defend the inhabitants of Jerusalem, and he that is feeble among them at that day shall be. Wait a minute. At that day shall be as David. And the house of David shall be as Elohim, as the angel of Yahweh before them. Y'all remember that angel that went before Zion? Well, so shall the house of David and his sons and Hamashiach, the son of David, shall be as Elohim. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Just as in um, Exodus chapter, is it chapter 7, where the Mosai said, You see, I make thee as Elohim to Pharaoh. Yeah, chapter 7, I'm just going to read it in my Bible before me. And Yahweh said unto Moses, See, I have made thee a Elohim to Pharaoh, and Aaron thy brother shall be thy prophet. So just as Moses was seen as Elohim before the world, before Mizraim, before the wicked, even before Zion, so shall David and his sons, the house of David, And Hamashiach. Y'all see all these foreshadowing of things happening? And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Who do they pierce in the hands and the feet? And they shall mourn for him as one mourner for his only son. And shall be in bitterness for him as one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. And it's clear to us who are the elect and know and see, brothers and sisters. It's very clear to us what this is saying. But others... It's going to say that, no, this is talking about Yasharal and Yasharal alone. But wait a minute. Hamashiach is of Yasharal too. 
Let the wicked be wicked still, brothers and sisters. Let the righteous be righteous still, as it says in Revelations. Some people are just not going to get it. Let's go to Zechariah 13 and 1. In that day there shall be a fountain open to the house of David and to the inhabitants of Jerusalem for sin and for uncleanness. This is that cleansing, that purging that's going to take place when you're purged. And the law of such commandments are put in your minds and hearts to do it, as it say in Jeremiah 31 and in, in Hebrews chapter 8 and in chapter 10. And let's drop down to 6 through 9. And one shall say unto him, What are these wounds in thine hands? Then he shall answer those with which I was wounded in the house of my friends. Those twelve, and one of them was a devil. Sold him out for thirty pieces of silver. Brothers and sisters, awake, O sword, against my shepherd and against the man that is my fellow, saith Yahweh of hosts. Smite the shepherd, and the sheep shall be scattered, and I will turn my hand upon the little ones. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, save Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off. Two parts shall be cut off and die. Now we saw this happen when Hamashiach the shepherd was smitten for the glory of the Most High, of course, and for our salvation and our saving, and the sheep was scattered. And they also, some of them died. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, save Yahweh, two parts therein shall be cut off. This happened when after Hamashiach's death, when they took Jerusalem and the land of Yehuda, But the third shall be left therein, and I will bring the third part through the fire. What that means, through slavery, persecution, through all those curses. And we'll refine them as silver is refined, and we'll try them as gold is tried. They shall call on my name, and I shall hear them. I will say it is my people, and they shall say, Yahweh is my Elohim. This is not a hard thing, brothers and sisters. Let's do one through nine. Behold. Chapter 14, 1 through 9. Behold, the day of Yahweh cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and, and the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall Yahweh go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount Olives. So, is this talking about the actual Most High stepping foot on the Mount or through him? I mean, or through Yahusha, he will be stepping on the mountain. This is what it's talking about. And his feet shall stand in that day upon Mount Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west, and there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove toward the north and half toward the south, and you shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal, 
Yeah, you shall flee like as you fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And Yahweh my Elohim shall come, and all the saints with thee. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. But it shall be one day which shall be known to Yahweh, not day nor night. But it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall come, and it shall be in that day that living water shall go out of Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea and half toward the end of sea in summer and in winter shall it be. So it will be continuously flow. And Yahweh shall be king over all the earth. In that day shall there be one Yahweh and his name one. Brothers and sisters. So what does that mean? We are one. We are all in all. Y'all remember reading that? We are all one with him. We all bear his name on us. Hallelujah. Let's go to Malachi chapter 3, 1 through 4. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the master whom you seek shall suddenly come to his temple, even the master of the covenant, whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, save Yahweh hosts. But who may abide the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he approacheth, appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, and like fuller soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. This is when you're going to be purged out, as Ezekiel chapter 20 says. You'll be purged out by Hamashiach, by the Most High, through this individual. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto Yahweh an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah, Yehuda, and Jerusalem be blessed, I mean be pleasant unto Yahweh as in the days of old and as in former years. And we shall see this come to pass. Brothers and sisters. I'm going to end this part here and we're going to finish in part two of three. Let's just say part three and a half, brothers and sisters. So y'all go to part three and a half and we're going to go into the War Scrolls and the Book of Jubilee and the Book of Jasher. And it shouldn't take that long, brothers and sisters. So bear with me. Thank y'all for tuning in. See you in the next Part, part three and a half.